Justin Trudeau at the G20 tells the world that it's not that people are going hungry and that they're going flat broke. It's just that they're being misinformed. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. Justin Trudeau was at the G20, as you may be aware, and he sat down on stage with this outfit called Global Citizen Now, who have already given Justin Trudeau an award and had their nose so far up, they were probably, you know, breathing for him. So don't expect any hard questions or don't expect any, you know, any getting to the bottom of it or let's examine the facts. It was simply let's everybody sit around in a gigantic circle and stroke each other's backs. And Justin Trudeau, because he was in a room where he feels like nobody's going to be paying attention, he just lets go with all of his real way of thinking. And I, I am shocked, even I am shocked at some of it. And now I know you look at me and you think that I'm always an optimist. But in this case, wow. The, the, I mean, he really should run these things by people before he says them out loud. Take this gem, for example. Being smart around fighting climate change is also a way of bringing in investment, of innovating, of creating growth uh, in sustainable ways inside our economies. The challenge we're facing right now is that the direct pressures on individuals and households have a lot of individual citizens, voters, families really worried that they're not able to make ends meet. And it's really, really easy when you're in a short-term survive, I gotta be able to pay the rent this month, I gotta be able to buy groceries for my kids, to say, okay, let's put climate change as a slightly lower priority. We can't do that around climate change. And unfortunately, we have an awful lot of political amplification. I had to listen to it a few times before I could understand that that's what he actually said. He says that people are being politically amplified into not having enough money to pay their bills, to buy groceries, to feed their children. No, he says, don't worry about it. It's not like you're going to get evicted. It's not like child services are going to come along and take your children away because you're not providing for them properly. Justin Trudeau's government is going to take care of your children, don't you know? That's what you want. Stephen Gilbo. He's going to treat your children, teach your children how to behave. He's going to teach them climbing lessons. I mean, you can't understand how... In one sentence, he says, oh, people are having a hard time meeting and making ends meet. And the reason that that is, is because politicians are trying to make them think that. The idea that he, can, he, he, his mind can't understand that people see what's going on and they talk about it out loud and people are like, yes, that's what's happening to me. I mean, it, food prices are 35 to 40% higher than they were just four years ago in one of the largest food providing countries on earth rent is unachievable in many cases people are sleeping 20 to a room and this guy goes on stage in a room full of fanatics and says oh no we got to convince them that they have to worry more about the environment than they do about a nice safe place to sleep feeding their children keeping their children happy and healthy and just generally looking after themselves. We have to make sure that they understand that all the smog coming out of China, we have to counter here in Canada with our tiny little population rather than eat. I'm telling you, some of the things that he said didn't even make sense to the sentence he just said before it. Listen to this, Jim. They don't want to hear about, oh, if they, you know, if they just, you know, pay a little more for an electric car, then that'll be protecting the environment. They can't pay a little more. They don't want to hear that they have to pay a little more to help the, the planet. They can't pay a little more. That's exactly right. They couldn't afford it if you wanted them to. And you want to blame them for that. Wrap your mind around how out of touch this guy is. 
he's the one that's driving this complete collapse of the economy. Now he wants to villainize the population because they can't afford to buy an electric car. And if they could afford to buy an electric car, they couldn't afford to plug it in. And if they could afford to plug it in, there would be no place to plug it in. Always talking about how you, you do better on the carbon tax if you just decide to ride your bicycle. What I love about that idea is think of all the people that go to work in high heels. Well, he wants you to just fire it on your backpack, ride your bicycle 30 or 40 kilometers around town, put your kid in the baby seat on the back of the bike in December. And you can carry your, your work clothes and your makeup and your hair and everything because you got to wear a helmet. And then you can just change your work. <laughs> unbelievable right how it's never his fault right it's not that his his plan is horrible and it didn't work out the way we wanted it to no it's that people want to believe that they can't afford to pay for it because when they look at their bank account they see that they can't afford to pay for it don't worry the hits keep coming from this guy who r flies private jets all over the world and then tries to tell you that you should take a bicycle lies to scare people into saying, oh, no, 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 we got to take care of our household budget and bottom line first, uh, environment second. And that's one of, the one of the things they have to stop is having people believe that they need to cover their own needs first before taking care of the environment. This guy's lost his mind. I mean, he is completely out of touch. I, don't, I mean, I'm not even sure out of touch is strong enough. You know, I, I love how these far left people are always telling you that they have all these solutions, solutions that they themselves are not taking part in. Justin Trudeau's socks probably could feed, you know, they're probably a couple of hundred bucks. Never mind the shoes and the watch. Never mind all of that stuff. I, oh, no, you have to do without, not, not him. No, 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 not him. Just you. You have to do with that because that's what he wants. He wants a population of serfs who will be so preoccupied with trying to feed themselves that they won't see him scooping the top half of the country and putting it directly into his pocket. Are you kidding me? He wants you to believe that it's a, that when you can't afford your budget, when you look around your, your, in your paycheck and you see the growth, you have to choose between picking food or picking, paying the electricity bill. It's not, a, it's not a reality. It's a lie. He says he's, it's a lie. And you really, you should just stop doing any of that and go live in a tent because that way there, your carbon footprint is going to be smaller. It's going to where you're going to end up anyway, because Justin Trudeau doesn't think that you should be putting your rent and your food as a priority. Un unbelievable. The, this is the leader of the country. It's like shades of Stalin out there. You know, I begin to understand what people mean when they say that the left is just like a religion. I mean, there's nothing but zealots in this room who don't care about the consequences of their actions. So he recommends that Canada does more. We're not doing enough according to this particular zealot that is here. But can we count on Canada to raise the ambition? People are talking about high ambition and going into the G20, how are you gonna encourage the rest of your counterparts to step up? We all know climate change is a global problem. We all know that it hits the most vulnerable, uh, whether it's uh, in emerging economies, whether it's women, whether it's indigenous peoples, uh, the most vulnerable around the world who are least responsible for creating and contributing to climate change are the ones that pay the heftiest price for it. To be able to leapfrog with technologies, uh, with uh, greener solutions that are affordable to them. Well, I see. So you want these emerging economies to have technology that is affordable to them, but you don't want your own people, the own Canadian people to be living a life that they can afford. That is, wow. That, that makes, that makes, well, that makes no sense at all, if I'm honest with you. The hits just kept on coming. I had a hard time watching this entire presentation, by the way. Uh, I assure you that it, it made me a little bit queasy. Convincing citizens, convincing people in my democracies that they have to 
pay more in taxes or they have to accept that some of their tax dollars are going to the most vulnerable in the world, they have to feel that it's something that is supporting them. The challenge we're facing, even as we're talking that, is people are worried about being able to pay their rent. People are worried about being able to buy their groceries. And Maslow's hierarchy of needs, dealing with your own concerns, are always top of mind. Wow. Just imagine that this is the leader of Canada and he's trying to convince you that you shouldn't worry about paying your bills more than you should worry about the smog that China is producing. I mean, we already have the cleanest electricity in the world. We already have the cleanest petrochemicals in the world. Why does he think that we should be doing more? Why are the other countries not doing more? Why, are, why is he not in China telling them to stop putting smog into the air? Why is he not in India telling them to stop burning coal? And remember, when I say burning coal, I mean right there in the, in the stove. They, they, there's no filters. They're just burning it to cook their dinner, to eat their house. Why is he not doing that? Well, I suppose he's probably not very welcome in India. Instead, he's trying to convince you that the hierarchy of needs is really what you're all about. But he forgets that that pyramid is, starts at a base, and the base of those needs is what is, is instinctual, that everyone needs those ones on the bottom to have a good mental health, a quality of life. And they are an, a warm, nurturing place to live and a full belly. Those are right there. Without them, the, the rest of your life, the rest of your existence is thrown off track. He's not trying to convince you that he's doing it for you. He's trying to convince you that you should be doing it so that he can walk around and say Canada does it. It's just a gigantic ego feed for this guy, him and Stephen Gilbo together. Because they're not looking for solutions that would happen so that we don't have to violate people's needs. He just says, I don't have to pay for it, so let's make everyone else do it. In true dictator, Marxist fashion, he is oblivious to the needs of the people, but expecting them to make sacrifices that he himself would never, ever, ever make. But on demonstrating that it creates jobs, it creates growth, and it directly benefits citizens. Of getting people to innovate, getting people to change their behaviors, we're facing a level of attacks, of misinformation, of disinformation. Yeah, it's not that you're broke. No, no, that's misinformation. It's not that your rent is more affordable than, and is, is so high that you could never afford it, that you need to basically earn a six-figure income to rent a one-bedroom apartment, or you need a six-and-a-half-figure income so that you can buy a one-bedroom apartment that is not much bigger than the one that you and six of your family members lived in in the country that you escaped from. No, it's misinformation, it's disinformation. It's not that you're looking around your life and seeing it in shambles. No, that's not it. That can't be it. It's got to be that somebody on, one of the politicians in Canada is saying to you, hey, we want better for our people. Yeah, that's what it is. He wants you to, somehow he wants me to believe that his plan is not that it's not working. No, it's just that because people are telling you it's not working. The, the level of disconnect, the level. I mean, it's, it's, it's a little bit, it's got me a little bit hot under the collar if I'm completely candid with you. I mean, think of the suffering that this guy is bringing to the world. And he's sitting on stage in Brazil in a room that would probably house half the homeless in the country talking about how they are not doing enough and that his plan is golden. It's just that if, if Pierre Polyev wouldn't complain about it, none of you would realize how hungry you are and how scared you are that your children are going to be out on the street. One more stream of snippets out of this failed drama teacher. We need to make sure that we are not moralizing and telling people, oh, you need to care about future generations. That approach of trying to make people feel bad because they're just trying to feed their families, 
just trying to you know, get a good day's work in and cover the mortgage, that has actually worked against us. So in his mind, he thinks that because you've told people they have to make a sacrifice for the betterment of, of other regions or for future generations or whatever, that's what's backfired. It's not that people keep giving and giving and giving and nothing is happening in returning to them. No, it's not that. It can't be that. It can't be that they have given until they have nothing left to give. That can't be it. It's got to be that because you said it out loud, well, that's backfiring on you. The middle class has nothing left to give. They have worked very hard and they thought they were achieving a goal and you have stolen that goal from them, Justin Trudeau. You have robbed them of their life's work and you think that it's propaganda that makes them think that? When they walk and they realize that they, they, have, they have done everything right but you have allowed prices to be out of reach so that the middle class is basically evaporating and you're trying to t convince us that the tiny population that we have in this country that is already the cleanest country on earth is somehow the problem. It's not Asia. No, it's not the un unregulated fires of coal that they do in their coal fire electrical plants or in their stoves. It's not that. No, no, it's, it's that Canadians somehow have been convinced that when we say something, they just want to do the opposite. They tried it your way, bud. That's the part that I think gets most people angry, is that you're not even giving them recognition for the sacrifices that they have already made. You're just telling yourself that if you disagree with me, then all of a sudden I'm going to, I'm going to cast bad light on you. I'm going, to, I'm going to ridicule you and criticize you and call you a villain. Without ever saying, look, I know the work you put in so far, and let's just take, let's just, let's put it on pause like I did for the, all those voters for, of mine in Nova Scotia. I guess that's who votes for him. It's embarrassing to think that, this, that we elected this guy. The Canadians voluntarily put this guy in office for nine solid years because you never looked at the substance of the human being. You simply looked at his face and you read his party. You got to start voting smart. Because this has brought us to ruin. All right, I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you all for listening. I'll talk to you next time.